In our last video, we introduced the idea of these practical filter bands. So in addition to having pass bands, which are frequencies that a filter passes through, and stop bands, which are frequencies that a filter blocks, we also needed to have these transition bands in between stop bands and pass bands to allow for a more practical implementation. In this video, I'm going to be introducing some of the design trade-offs between different families of filters. In particular, we're going to focus on the low-pass Butterworth analog filter. I'm also going to talk about the equations that are used to describe and design Butterworth filters. So a particular feature about the Butterworth filter is that it is maximally flat. And this means that when you're in the pass band, the magnitude of the frequency response has the fewest deviations in its behavior. The price for being maximally flat is that the Butterworth filters tend to need larger transition bands than other types of filters. One type of filter that allows a more narrow transition band, so it can have steeper transitions between pass bands and stop bands, is the Chebyshev filter. The trade-off that the Chebyshev filter makes then is that it ends up with having these ripples, so you get larger deviations in the magnitude of the frequency response when you're in the pass band. Another alteration of the Chebyshev filter known as the inverse Chebyshev trades off the smoothness in the stop band for smoothness in the pass band. So it'll give you a smooth behavior in the pass band and then you get ripples in the stop band behavior. This whole notion of having ripples can introduce new constraints to a filter performance specification. It might not be enough to say that you want to have a pass band over some frequency and then a stop band over some other frequency. We can also introduce then a ripple constraint to say that within a pass band or a stop band, we might want to constrain these ripples so that they're no bigger than some maximum value. But now let's get back to talking more about the Butterworth filter. For the low pass Butterworth filter, the pole locations are all in a semicircle on the left half of the imaginary s-axis. So obviously we can see that the filter is stable because all the poles have negative real components. The frequency response magnitude of the low-pass Butterworth filter is 1 over the square root of 1 plus the ratio of the frequency divided by the cutoff frequency. The ratio is to the power of 2 times n, where n is the order of the filter. The cutoff frequency is a very important parameter when talking about filters. It's actually the half power cutoff frequency. So this means that when the input is at this particular frequency, the magnitude of the frequency response is going to be one over the square root of two. In dB, it's minus three dB. So a key parameter here is the filter order. And this gives you a measure of the complexity of the filter, how many components are needed in order to assemble it. And if we increase the filter order for a given cutoff frequency, we would find that the magnitude of the frequency responses would all have sharper and sharper transitions, but they all would intersect at the cutoff frequency. Now let's talk a little bit about the design of Butterworth filters. Let's say you have a performance specification where you have a pass band gain, a stop band gain, and then the edge frequencies of the pass band and the stop band. We can use the equation for the magnitude of the frequency response to work out what order is needed in order to meet this particular design specification. We need to take logs in order to work out the value, and we also have a ceiling operation, which means that we need to round up because the value that we get from the calculation can end up being not integer, but we need the filter order to be an integer value. We actually get two options for the cutoff frequency. One equation for the cutoff frequency is assuming that we meet the edge of the pass band specification exactly, and then the other option is meeting the stop band specification exactly. What we end up with then is a range of frequencies that we can use for our cutoff. Let's look at a quick example. Let's say we have a filter performance specification where we want a pass band of minus 2 dB, a stop band of minus 20 dB, and then pass band and stop band frequencies of 10 radians per second and 20 radians per second. If we use the order formula, we would calculate that the required order is 3.7, so we have to round this up to 4. The cutoff frequencies that we would calculate are 10.69 radians per second in the pass band and 11.26 radians per second in the stop band. This means that in the implementation, we can pick a cutoff frequency that is anywhere between these two values. So this is all that we have to cover in this series in terms of the implementation and design of analog filters. We're going to have a lot more to say about filter design implementation when we get to the digital systems section of this series, but that'll be in a future video. Feel free to subscribe and leave feedback in the comments. There's also a lecture notes PDF in the description. See you next time.